Welcome and happy Midfall Festival to all who are celebrating. I want to thank you for tuning in today and joining us for this real-time virtual career discussion with Columbia alum Annabelle Chien. My name is Melissa Begg, and I have the great honor of serving as Dean of the Columbia School of Social Work. I'll be moderating today's conversation along with my esteemed colleague, Dr. Chin Gao. First, a little bit about our distinguished alum, Annabelle Chin. Annabelle is a 2014 graduate of the Columbia MSW program, and she's the founder and chair of Know Yourself, a startup. She has devoted the last seven years to promoting the awareness of the importance of mental health across Chinese society. Know Yourself provides innovative digital mental health products and services and includes text counseling powered by a database toolkit for counselors, online self-help training programs with practice based on CBT, ACT, and mindfulness, and online support groups that have different themes. Through social media platforms, Know Yourself has garnered over 20 million followers. And this year, Know Yourself has developed a new partnership with an artificial intelligence company in China. And they're going to partner together to train a chat GPT model with the data collected through Know Yourself services. My co-moderator today is my wonderful colleague, Dr. Qin Gao. Dr. Gao is Professor of Social Work and Social Policy and Associate Dean for Doctoral Education here at Columbia School of Social Work. She's also the founding director of the Columbia China Center for Social Policy. Dr. Gao studies poverty, inequality, social policy, and population well-being in China and among Asian Americans. Dr. Gao's work has been supported by multiple national and international funding sources, including the Asian Development Bank, UNICEF, and the World Bank. Today, we're going to hear more about Annabelle's journey from her time as a student here at Columbia all the way through to today as a successful social entrepreneur and a leading mental health advocate in China. Chin. Thank you, Dean Bag, and welcome back home to Columbia School of Social Work, Annabelle. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Bag, and thank you, Professor Gao. Oh, I, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm one of the over 20 million followers of yeah. Know Yourself. So to start us off, could you please tell us about Know Yourself and what this work means to you? Yeah, um, Dean Bag just uh, almost introduced all of it of Know Yourself. So I founded Know Yourself in the year of 2016, and we started uh, developing content in multiple media forms, like articles or short videos, you know, to make um, psychological uh, knowledge interesting and make it easy for the mass audience to uh, absorb. So, and later on, we research and develop uh, like digital innovative products and services. So basically I want to figure out with the power of technique, uh, is it possible to make psychological products like more affordable and more accessible, you know, for everyone instead of for, instead of for the elite like class, yes. Great. Um, I'm curious, um, Annabelle, when you were choosing social work programs, you chose to come to Columbia. What mm -hmm. motivated that choice? Um, yeah, I thought about that. Uh, I have, there are three reasons. The right. first one uh, and the most important one is I looked into the design of our course. So I see um, a combination of the micro perspective and the macro perspective, mm -hmm. uh, which makes a lot of sense to me because I, I think no individual is like isolated from the larger social uh, society, like social system. Absolutely. So I think it's important to have a uh, integrated uh, perspective mm -hmm. on that. So that's the major thing. And plus, you know, it's in New York. And plus the branding, of course. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes for sure. That's a reason. That's a great summary of what uh, makes Columbia School of Social Work stand out mm -hmm. among our peers. Um, I want to follow up with a question about Know Yourself. How did it all begin? Can you tell us about what inspired you to start this company? Mm -hmm. um, I think my experience in uh, so Columbia University School of Social Work actually inspires me. So uh, before graduation, I have no idea what I'm going to do, you know. Um, and I talked with uh, our career development development office and um, 
the advisor there asked a very important question for me. He, she said like, what is a good life look like for you? Like what kind of life is suitable for you? Where lies your strengths and weakness? And I feel like I have no idea uh, for those questions because in Chinese society, uh, social norms are a lot more important than personal uh, preference, mm -hmm. right? So I didn't like think it through. So uh, I went back and I think, well, I need to take some time and I need to take some action to figure out those questions. So instead of applying for a PhD program after master program, that was my original plan, I decided to go back to China and um, look out you know, in the society to see uh, like where, where lies the opportunity for me to make a difference and also you know, to better know myself. So that's the original purpose of uh, founding this company. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, and I think a lot of students who are starting out feel like they need to know the entire career path when they begin. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just said something really interesting, which mm -hmm. is you didn't have this in mind at all. I, when don't, you I don't know. I have yeah. no clue. No clue. <laughs> um, and yet here you are. So I, mm -hmm. I, I just wonder if you could talk about that a, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and thinking back on it over time uh, mm -hmm. for, for other students to think about. Mm -hmm. um, what would you might what might you do differently mm -hmm. if you had your Columbia years to do over again over those two years? Would you do anything differently or um would yes, keep it I would I would um I think if I had the chance to go back to my Columbia years, the um I would spend less time uh, uh, like in personal life or social life. Oh. I would work even harder, you really? know to absorb you know, everything that my professor self is offering. Because after um, graduated, I realized how uh, like this, this kind of opportunity is once in your lifetime. And it's, it's expensive and difficult to find a similar resource mm -hmm. once you leave school. So yeah, that's the one thing that I would, I worked hard, but yeah. I, would, I would work even harder if I had the opportunity, right? Um, and, and talking about having no clue, um, I think uh, after you know, so many years being an entrepreneur, I realized it's dangerous for the young generation to believe that they must you know, see the future you know, mm -hmm. when they uh, just started because it, it can cause perfectionism you know, for them, and then it, it end up with, you know, choosing uh, between different assumptions, yeah. while the most important thing is to uh, take action. So for the first two years after I graduated, um, I work really, really hard. I work three jobs. So during the daytime, I work as a data analysis in Alibaba, which is a very huge internet corporation. At that time, I believe that technology is the future. Yes. And my position as big data analyst um, like give me the opportunity to really understand what is going on with like different uh, departments and you know to to get a better understanding of the internet world. And then I work part-timely as a, um, as a counselor. Mm -hmm. So I see clients okay. since I took clinical concentration when I was here. Um, I use my weekend. I see 14 patients during weekend oh my and, and I pay supervision by myself. So it's expensive too yes. to, to, to have a supervision. And then um, during you know, the nighttime when I'm off work from Monday to Friday, I write articles online. That was the original form of Know Yourself. You know the very okay. beginning of our uh, was social it a blog media. Post? Is it yeah, it's a it's a it's a um, WeChat public account. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a trending thing at the time. It was a trending thing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to uh, make every effort that you can. So I think it's a privilege to actually have the chance yeah. to make effort. There, there are lots of people out there. They have, you know, even if they want to make effort. They have no uh, resource and opportunity and competence to do that. Yeah. So yeah. I think just work without knowing 
you know, heading without knowing you're heading to anywhere, just to work hard. Yeah. I, I, I just want to underscore that. I think remaining open is what mm-hmm. you're saying too. And yeah. I think that'll be encouraging to yes. a lot of our students. Yeah. They don't have to know right now and yes. remain open to possibility. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What you said really resonated with me. It's oh, really? so inspiring. <laughs> Uh, I'm fortunate to be a faculty member to teach students every day. So I'm at a university, but I learn from the students every day. Uh, They open my mind. I see new possibilities. So it's wonderful to hear you reflect on that experience. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah. I want to ask a question about culture. Mm -hmm. You and I share the Chinese culture. So I want to uh, learn from you. What does culture and family and society mean in your life and in your career decisions? Mm-hmm. Does that play a role that's shaping how you decide, make decisions uh, for your company and for your career choices? Yes, definitely. I grew up fighting against my father, who is the typical representative of the psychiatric society. Um, so basically, um, he doesn't care about what I want, what, what kind of life I want to live. Instead, he wants me to ha- to like um, pursue those so- social norms that stand for uh, success, um, like reputation and power, right? So, um, but I don't think that's the right thing to do. So he wants to design everything for me, every step, which school you are going to. Like, so when I decided to um, study abroad, my father like strongly disagree with my decision. Um, so I had to negotiate with him, you know, and promised him I would be admitted by you know a school with good like branding, mm-hmm. uh, so he can brag about it. <laughs> and in in return, he would pay my like tuition fee. But I will I promise like I won't. Uh, need his money for like further uh, life, you know, so, other than that. So, um, yeah. So I think um, by fighting uh, my father's values, um, I developed my uh, critical thinking, uh, like as as when I was very young, um, and that actually um, made who I am nowadays. Like I made my own choice. I think it's my right to decide what I want for my life. <laughs> That's so powerful. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Um, if you reflect back on your journey from being a student uh, at Columbia to today, what are some milestones that stand out for you? Were there major breakthroughs mm. or even major challenges that you had to overcome mm. or navigate to get to this point in your career? Um, I still remember when I began when I began my uh, journey here. Um, I think I was um, experiencing cultural shock mm. uh, because the teachers um, like asked asked us like uh, what pronoun like you prefer to, for me to use. Uh, and the teachers would uh, frequently raise that question. And I, I'm just uh, make you, using it as an example, um, like before class. And I was like, what does that even mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I remember I took a class called the ISM lab. Mm-hmm. And that was, um, I don't know, life-changing, I'd mm-hmm. say. Oh, wow. Because all those um, topics we are talking about in that class, like is something that never occurred to me when I was back there in China, because we Chinese society uh, like doesn't include that much of varieties. So like all types of isms, like I it exists, but I have been overlooked those you know for long. So yeah, in that class, and I think that class is like the origin like form of know yourself later because mm-hmm. we have to write a blog mm-hmm. you know for that course mm-hmm. and we research and we put it in the media form you know and reflect on uh, our observations in our daily lives so i think that's a, an amazing course that definitely is a milestone for me mm-hmm. yeah and the next one um i'd say and there are two more mm-hmm. so the next one is when i received uh, the fundraising 
mm -hmm. from venture capitals for my company. Mm -hmm. But I still have mixed feelings for that because on one side, I don't really enjoy being chief executive officer. Mm -hmm. I prefer to do more direct direct work mm -hmm. with people, you know, either um, writing an article or uh, conduct a counseling session. You know. But I don't. I'm not a fan of management. But on the other hand, I think um, the fact that I, you know, raise some money, um, make this game like a real game. So then I had to take everything into consideration, you know, how to uh, make money because it's a business, right? It's not a nonprofit like organization. So um, I have to face my own limitations since then, mm -hmm. like my limitation as a leader, you know, um, yeah. So, and that's related to the third milestone I'm thinking of, which is one day um, it occurred to me that I should, I should have uh, lead the company in a feminine way. Because for the first several years as a chief exec executive officer, I, mo I mimic my father. So I'm like, uh, I'm the authority, I'm strict, and because I felt a lot of pressure from the venture capitals. So I'm strict, I'm direct, and I focus on the thing, like what we are doing. But later on, I um, like, and that made me suffer, mm -hmm. uh, not to mention for the uh, members, for mm -hmm. the um, work, for, for the employees of, of, of Norasoft. So later on, I realized I should um, emphasis more on connection. I should provide um, my employees with psychological security. Um, that way they can be creative. So um, I just shifted like completely of my leading style. I emphasize, I listen, you know, I do everything in a woman's way. Yeah, and I, and, and I definitely feel that helps. That's the right path to take. And I'm just thinking of the name of your company, Know Yourself. Oh, You've yes. just given this beautiful description of how yes. you come to know yourself uh, better as yes. a leader. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the elements of social work uh, come through in your yeah. narrative. So we have a track for the leadership management and entrepreneurship in social justice. Oh, I should have to take <laughs> that. <laughs> um, and also these clinical skills, listen to yes, your yeah. audience, listen to yourself, right? Be um, um, empathetic. Yes. Right? Um, I think empathy is what drove me to start this company in the first place, because I empathize with all my generation, you know, who live in China. We, nobody raised, nobody ever raised those important questions for us when we grew up. We were told to follow, you know, follow the authority to uh, live a life that everyone would look up to, you know. But I emphasize with them, we 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 were not given the opportunity to fully explore like our passion, our limitation, you know, everything. So that's why I named my company as Know Your Soul. Perfect. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think you also have empathy to a bigger, much larger population. I read some of the posts. I mean, some speak so directly and powerfully to the older mm -hmm. population, some to youth and adolescents. Mm -hmm. It's just an amazing um, company and all the themes you carefully choose mm -hmm. speak to a lot of people. I, I have to say that I get that spirit from here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, um, so what means to me the most is to, uh, makes the change and moves the mountains. Mm -hmm. So actually it's not the best decision business-wise to uh, choose um, digital innovative products and services as the path because um, Chinese people are not ready to pay for those services yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they prefer to pay for like individual, uh, sorry, sorry, talk, talk therapist interpersonally. Um, they are more ready to pay for that. However, uh, in China, insurance doesn't cover uh, counseling services, which means it can only be, you know, um, used for for those elite class, like upper middle class. Um, but I always want to serve the major, like the the majority, or I wouldn't call it the majority, but the mass, like mm -hmm. mass audience. Like I want it to be more 
um, affordable, like I said before. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Um, just was curious um, where you're going next. You've just alluded to it, mm -hmm. Jin. Um, in terms of the, the next five years mm -hmm. uh, and what you see for Know Yourself, its growth and how you are using technology to raise awareness mm -hmm. and deliver services mm -hmm. in really innovative, unique ways that mm -hmm. are, are not so well tested. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start with the tax counseling pro um, services we provide. Um, like for us, their services doesn't rely on individual counselors. Instead, we provide them with a big data, like database. So because for from the last seven years, we have collected all uh, aspects of data um, of our users. And so uh, we have we developed um, a toolkit for the counselors. For example, if a user ran into a problem, a problem in this aspect of his or her life, here are the assignments and here are the evidence-based um, like knowledge or like practice that you can uh, offer for them. So it makes the counselors work easier. Um, and, and this year we have developed a partnership with a leading AI company in China uh, because you know, ChatGPT model is now everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not thinking about to replace the counselor with AI, which I think that's, a, like the too high ago, um, what we can do is to have AI um, to uh, like, just to make the um, data searching like easier and quicker for the counselor. Um, and maybe like one day eventually, you know, um, the AI can do a little bit of like company work and to, to keep people and to, um, to comfort people's emotion, for example. Yeah, so that's where we aim for, because that day uh, the service is going to be like really, really cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, for sure. And for me, I am actually stepped down. Uh, like I don't work as chief executive officer anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, I hired someone because the corporation is getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So the uh, management thing is becoming like uh, more and more professional. Right. So I decided to stay as a um, as a social work professional <laughs> instead of a management professional. So I plan actually to gain a PhD um, in a clinical field, probably couple therapy. I'm interested in that. So, so yeah, that's my I see where I see myself in five years. That's great. Um, you have so successfully um, made this transition, uh, or maybe it's not a transition, evolution social worker to entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, and it's really exciting so as you think about that path and all the twists and turns that your mm -hmm. career has taken so far mm -hmm. um, what kind of advice mm -hmm. would you want to give current students mm -hmm. who might be interested in a similar kind of career path mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't call myself as successful because I only have achieved the the like the half of the journey so I, I don't know of the next half where may belongs to like more business like professional like people mm -hmm. so um what i like you will be surprising that how little i think about business you know during the whole journey um it's more of a social work thing like uh, you you take an action that you believe it will benefit others mm -hmm. and then uh it, it comes lots of problems and you focus on problem solving <laughs> like you think mm -hmm. about all the resource mm -hmm. and you think you think about what kind of skill you need mm -hmm. and then you find those people who have that skills so it's just um, problem solving uh, like journey instead of a business journey for me yeah yeah so and and you need to like reflect on your goal mm -hmm. uh, and we also learn that yeah uh, 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 in our class mm -hmm. okay. that that's such a great reflection of what uh, we as social workers <laughs> are and do yes. we are so mission and vision driven yes and then we face a problem we solve the problem yes. mm -hmm. so it's perfect yeah to always wow. reflect on the goal and to de to divide it your goal into uh, small tasks right and then find the resource to to make that task completed 
that's it <laughs> as simple as that well, so, yeah. yeah so Gina and I've had a whole ton of questions and mm -hmm. some questions were actually submitted ahead of time mm -hmm. by folks in the audience mm -hmm. um so we want to start to share some of those um thank you um let me start with this one Gina mm -hmm. if you wouldn't mind so what do you know about social work today that you wish you could tell your younger self before you got the Master of Social Work degree? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a, that's a quite interesting one. Um, I think it's about um, explore what your personal value is. Mm. Um, if I um, had the chance to tell the younger version of me, I would ask her to um, really think about what kind of value she believes in. Uh, I think that's what's the most important thing, being a social worker. Because if you are attracted by you know, the materialism, like the world, then you will be disappointed because for the beginning, like several years after graduation, you are not going to make a bunch of money out of it right away. So, but if you like are really driven by the value to make a difference, then you will feel satisfied and happy almost every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the charming part of being a social worker. What a great message! Yeah. What a great <laughs> message. Um, I'm just thinking about timeline here. You you graduated in 2014. Yes. You worked for a couple of years doing other no, things. No, I worked you... about. Mm -hmm. 10 months 10 months Alibaba. and then you and then, then you started the then Yourself I, blog. Uh, I start yeah I started the Nails of blog while I was working for Alibaba. okay like I said okay. I was working yeah. three jobs right <laughs> right and right. then um after about um one and a half year I uh like I after 10 months I quit my job mm -hmm. and then I I am working on the um, counseling work and know yourself at the same time for about half a year. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, received the fundraising from Venture Capitals. Mm -hmm. I officially started a company for Know Yourself. I started okay. recruiting and everything. Mm -hmm. And after um, more, a little bit, like after two more years, right. I had to quit my uh, clinical Other jobs. work. <laughs> yeah. uh, not because I, I'm not interested anymore. And not, not act, it's not because of I was busy. It was because of the ethical dilemma I was facing. Really? Yeah, because when I was a clinician, I I don't want to have a social media and I don't mm -hmm. want a lot of interviews of me on TV. It would make the yeah. dynamic a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But since I was an entrepreneur now, I had to do that. So mm -hmm. I stopped my clinical mm -hmm. work. And so your company was still very young yes. when COVID came. Yes. How did the pandemic impact your work at that point? Well... <laughs> Yeah, that's a tricky question because when pandemic makes everyone's life miserable, it actually helps my company in a way. Because, you know, before pandemic, um, I can still recall uh, in different years, Chinese young generation, they uh, focused, they are interested in different topics. Mm -hmm. For the year of 2015 and 2016, the most uh, popular topics on our platform is around the original family, like mm -hmm. your relationship between you, the relationship between your parents and you. And during the year of 2016 and 2017, um, what's most popular is relationship. Mm -hmm. And during the year of 2018 and 2019, people start to thinking about like uh, work addicted because in China, we have this 996 thing, like you have to work nine hours per day, uh, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week. Oh my God. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> so uh, we talked, me personally, um, I talked about dehumanization and alienation a lot during mm -hmm. those years. And then the pandemic came. So before um, pandemic, people don't really believe in like anxiety is a real thing or depression is a real thing. Um, they are interested in psychological field because of, the relationships, uh, you know, interpersonal relationships. Mm -hmm. And after that, I think most of the um, uh, the people within Chinese society, especially in those cities that, you know, quarantine happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think most of people uh, experience depression and anxiety 
uh, in at least some period. Yeah. So isolating. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so isolating. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, we have this mini program, wheelchair mini program, it's for meditation. And the user of that uh, mini program, like, uh, magically, like, significantly increase during the period of pandemic. People started to look out for uh, things that can make them feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, yes. so we attract more users during yes. pandemic. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing with us the changes in themes mm -hmm. that you observe from your company's perspective. Mm -hmm. I think it's a reflection of the evolvement of mm -hmm. mental health and mental well-being mm -hmm. of the population. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we have a question from one of the viewers, um, which speaks to how what you do transcends culture and society. Mm -hmm. So this viewer is interested in doing something similar mm -hmm. in the American uh, society with indigenous communities mm -hmm. here. And how do you address issues of literacy and dialect in your program? China, of course, being a very multilingual in terms of local dialects and the traditions culture. Mm -hmm. um, so we are talking about culture adaptive like topic there right um yeah uh i yeah this is also what i learned here uh you know to always take culture into consideration so uh that is also the reason why i didn't choose a uh, one-on-one -on -one talk therapy you know for uh as the major service for know yourself it was because in china i find in chinese culture it's easier for people to share with those who have similar cha challenges. It's, it, they feel better to be in a group mm -hmm. instead of you know, facing the therapist you know, individually. So support group mm -hmm. is a product that I really like and I'm, I feel really proud of. So before the pandemic, it's offline. So uh, we run it in more than 40 cities in China on different themes. You know, like for interpersonal um, difficulties or career development or marriage issues, mm -hmm. you know, everything. So, um, and it contains three to four groups in one meeting and, and it contains eight to 12 uh, members within one group, mm -hmm. which is also what I learned here from social work class. So, um, and um, yeah, just uh, as what I had predicted, Chinese people are more comfortable in this way with a group of people who share similar uh, like confusion and similar challenges. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the uh, important details is that I really make sure it is a strength-based product <laughs> instead of problematic, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, problem-based like, uh, um, product. I have those people share like what kind of experiences they have um, like trying to so, uh, solve their problems instead of you know just complaining to each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. So in to answer that question, I think you should uh, think about the audience that you want to attract and what kind of culture they uh, they hold, mm -hmm. and you adjust a standardized um, product and services into a new form that is more suitable for that culture. Uh, culture yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Another topic also raised by an audience member is stigma. Mm -hmm. Mental health everywhere is strongly tied to stigma. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how Know Yourself has helped to decrease mental health related stigma in China? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think uh, Know Yourself did the work, but I, I think pandemic contributes to it a lot hmm. uh, because it's so common nowadays. Mm -hmm. And um, for the younger generation, it's now trendy for them to see a therapist. It's, it, it, it stands for a new lifestyle. Like it means I am a person who wants to explore myself, you know, and I am spiritual and I have fun, depth in everything. So I think it's uh, it's happening uh, throughout the world. Like um, people now take mental health like as a common topic nowadays. Yeah, yeah. We we definitely are part of it, of the influence, but 
we didn't do all the work. And you're certainly elevating the conversation, mm -hmm. right, and bringing it to the fore. Mm -hmm. um, and another viewer was uh, asking an interesting question about, you know, your your pioneering work doing this through technology mm -hmm. through apps mm -hmm. um how do you ensure the confidentiality mm -hmm. of your clients um and how do you safeguard the data particularly now with this new mm -hmm. partnership mm -hmm. with ai yeah that is a um us us that is uh, something that i am personally str like uh, struggle with uh struggling with so um for the confidential thing we do it in a traditional way like we have all the um the counselors who work for us sign, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sign a, like, how do I say that? Consent form? Uh, consent, uh, 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 yeah. I have the patient sign the consent form, right. but I have the um, counselor sign like a legal uh, document. Mm -hmm. So like to obey certain kind of obligation that they must keep everything mm -hmm. sure. uh, confidential. So we do it in a traditional way. We will mail that document to them and they will sign it and they mail it back to us. But the data part, you know, it's really tricky. Mm -hmm. So um, because we have to um, use that data to train the ChatGP model. Mm -hmm. So, so far what we are trying to do here is we, um, we are not allow either, uh, we are not allow the partner to use any of that um, like um, bis business wise. So it's only for like uh, the technique, like mm -hmm. the, the development of the technique thing. Um, one day, if we achieve anything that can be used like in a business way, we will discuss like how to do that in a more ethical way. Right, mm -hmm. right, thank mm -hmm. you. We have a viewer who is your classmate from 2014 <laughs> uh, asking how can they access your blog and the information of Know Yourself uh, in English, uh, whether oh, that's possible. That's a tricky thing. Um, I know there are several uh, interviews out there, um, but our product and services is not in English because what we do is we research in English world and we uh, translate them and we put them in Chinese. Uh, so because American is more advanced in mental health field comparing to Chinese. So, yeah, so far, no. <laughs> a related question. Do you have plans to expand the company to other countries? Um, you know, Professor Gao, I'm so interested in your study within the Asian uh, population mm -hmm. because I do feel that um, a lot of Chinese people, they now they try to immigrate to the Western countries and they suffer um, as being, you know, Asian. In, and being Chinese in the U.S. and in the Western world. And I, I'm interested in that population. But, and also we believe that maybe in a developed country, uh, the users may be more ready to pay for mental health services. Mm -hmm. So it might be helpful business-wise for Know Yourself. So we are considering about that. Yeah. Um, certainly, uh, I did this survey of Chinese Americans last year mm -hmm. with over 6,000 people, mm -hmm. about half were born in China. Mm -hmm. So I believe wow. many of them are your followers. Uh -huh. uh, they need bilingual information mm -hmm. and access to bilingual services. Mm -hmm. So what you do in China actually already support this population. But I also understand that there's more need here too, mm -hmm. especially the younger generation mm -hmm. who probably are born here or uh, migrated here mm -hmm. at an early age. They are yeah. still exposed to both cultures. Yeah, because... I had my field education the, the second year of um, like here, I did it in a, a center for family life. It hmm. serves like the uh, immigrant families in Brooklyn. And Sunset Park. Yes, yes, Sunset Park. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I did see them struggle. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so this next question, again, from a viewer is about uh, culturally responsive services in China. Um, are those culturally responsive services available? Um, are they provided by clinical social workers or psychological counseling? Uh, yeah, it's an interesting question. What does that mean? What kind yeah. of service this he's talking about? 
You know, yeah. Counseling, I think. Probably counseling. You know, we've talked about this before and you, oh, you've alluded to this before that counseling is yeah, not so counseling. readily available. Yeah, but counseling is yeah. a very tricky topic in China because at the end of the year of 2017, the government has canceled the licensing exam in China. So mm-hmm. there's no like legal license for therapists in China since uh, 20, 2017. Mm-hmm. It was because before that, the exam, you know, for, for licensing, it was so simple. Like you, so most people, you either memorize the textbook, you can pass, or you pay enough money to the organizations who, you know, organize that license exam and you can pass. So most of people who have the license as a therapist in China, they know nothing about what counseling is. So government recognizes this problem. And so they, they canceled that licensing exam. However, there's still no like uh, protocols or laws like out there um, to tell the market what can be done and what cannot be done. There's no like ethical supervisions out there. So it's a mess. (laughs) I mean, when you were talking, I was thinking about uh, examples. One thing that I thought of is boundaries Mm -hmm. in the Chinese culture, right? Suppose... I'm dealing with some psychological or even physical health challenges, and I come to see a therapist. Uh, but uh, am I supposed to share the information yes. with my family members? Mm-hmm. And sometimes even the patient, him or herself, doesn't know the truth about yes. their condition. It's the family who knows. How do you deal with such kind of challenges? Yeah, um, I worked as a counselor for like about three years in China. That was really difficult, mm-hmm. um, and it's more family is an issue and then I think the there's a very big problem there is the lack of the systematic support so for example um I have a suicidal patient I have to do the crisis intervention by myself I have to open like my assistant's cell phone to that patient so mm-hmm. she he can call you know anytime with like to to say that I'm in crisis mm-hmm. and and you feel like so much pressure on yourself and sometimes I try to contact the, the psychiatrist of my patients. And they're like, we are, we are too busy. We don't want to work with counselors oh because they are so busy. They're overworked. Yeah, they're overworked. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And you don't know, like, who who can be trusted to make a referral. Yeah. You know, so it's just uh, too, too hard. Yeah, you're so right. I think a lot of schools and other settings don't have the system mm-hmm. ready and you yeah. wanting to provide the services, but where, how, yes, through the exactly. system. I agree exactly. with you. Yeah. And that's one person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another viewer wanted to know your advice on um, what would you recommend students learn before they try to start a business? And if I could add to that, I just, I remember talking with another wonderful alum who first did her MSW and then did an MBA. Wow. And very successful business career. Um, and I remember her saying to me very distinctly, I use my MSW skills every day yes, in the I, business I world. So thinking about that and thinking about what students mm-hmm. need to know before embarking on such an ambitious thing as founding a business, what yeah. would you say? But I would like to answer this, you know, um, um, like I'm referring to the very first class I take here. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I still remember the first concept I learned is the use of, of self. So I think the most important skills is um, you have to learn to be honest with yourself. That's so important uh, starting a business because if you keep, you know, fooling yourself around, then you are not getting anywhere. And um, you have to learn to be honest with with yourself. You have to learn to um, face your limitation. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. But. You have to. I still remember a model of change that I learned here, uh, which is the uh, six stages of change. And it says um, everyone has a comfort zone. And if you want to grow, the perfect positioning you should to take is at the edge of your comfort zone. Because if you stay inside the comfort zone, you will never grow. And if you jump you know, too far away from your comfort zone, it will be too uncomfortable. Then you will like break you down. So always stay at the edge of the of your comfort zone. It feels a little bit uncomfortable, but you can still endure it. Then you can grow like rapidly. And that's what you need to, you know, start to for a startup. You have to grow rapidly. 
That's so well said. I have to say, I talk about this with my students often. Even in doing research, you have to know yourself. Be honest. <laughs> yeah, and do self-work. What are you really interested in yes. uh, studying and uh, whether you have the capacity to do mm -hmm. it? Yes. It's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but uh, it's so true. Yeah. yeah. Um, another viewer asked a question which actually speaks to this. Um, what are some challenges you faced when you founded know yourself how did you overcome that mm -hmm. I haven't overcome that <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I think um yeah like I said you have to face your limitation right um but it's like sometimes it's just difficult to overcome your own limitation for me I am very introvert so um and I have a history of you know being bullied when I was a teenager mm -hmm. so it's so challenging, for, so challenging for me to hang out with so many like females who are the same age as me. <laughs> so, and that creates a lot of uh, pressure and it, it triggers a lot of my traumatic, you know, feelings. Mm -hmm. and, and so I tend to um, like step away, you know, I, I try to avoid conflicts and sometimes, um, I, I I don't I'm not that active in networking, which is not good mm -hmm. for a CEO because you have to network and one day you can run into some very good person who can become your colleagues and sometimes you you see you seek marketing opportunities through that yeah that part um, I think that that creates some of the um, failure you know yourself but. Yes, yeah, so now that that's why I'm thinking about you know step down like instead of uh, being CEO, I will hire someone who have the capacity to be a CEO who can do the job better than me, and I will will focus more on the product designing part and you know to provide my insights for them. You know that's it. I think that's a way to to deal with your limitation. You quit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um... The tree has to bend, not break, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you just said something that really rang true with me too. It has to do with networking. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can even call it partnership. Mm -hmm. I think some people have a mm -hmm. see a negative connotation yes. of networking, but it's so critical. I think for everything in business and in everything else, right? Everything that we do is really based on mm -hmm. on human relationship, mm -hmm. partnership, and yes. Um, I think you've underscored that. Yes. And something social workers do really well. Yeah, right? there, there's something I really want to add. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, comments that I like to make. Um, I think it's all about working with others. Right. You have to learn like how to successfully cooperate with others yes. before you can achieve anything. Yes. I'm still learning that. Mm -hmm. Especially for those who have uh, like who are well educated, who have uh, elite background. You know, you, then sometimes you are so arrogant. You look down on people, but actually they matter. You can't achieve nothing without them. <laughs> yeah, that's really important. Yeah, I had a mentor once um, who said this wonderful thing to me. He's, you know, if, if you've accomplished something, mm -hmm. you probably need to thank people around you. Mm -hmm. Because if you did it by yourself, it's probably not big enough to mention. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it was something really big, mm -hmm. you relied on a whole lot of other mm -hmm. people to make that happen. Um, I think the the first year, my my field education uh, here, the, um, the, what I did during my first year really um, helped me in that way. Um, I I did my field education in a needle exchange program. Yeah. So, and that was uh, mind blowing. And um, almost all, um, I think all participants, they use more than three types of drugs mm -hmm. and 97% of them are HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And I fit in, so, so I just feel so fitted. But wow. and in that environment, I learned if you want to communicate uh, or if you want to help others, you as you know the party who have better education it's your responsibility to learn their language mm -hmm. and communicate with them in their language you shouldn't like stand there and say oh you can't understand me it's your fault mm -hmm. otherwise you know what's the point of being the more educated um, side of right. the party right? right so and that really i think that's something 
helps NeuroSolve to uh, success because what we do is to communicate with the society. We we want to communicate. We want to communicate with them. So uh, we don't use professional language. Mm -hmm. We use a language that they feel interested in and they relatable. Yeah, yeah, relatable. Yeah, yes. yeah, that makes so much sense. I still miss that place. Yeah, <laughs> Washington <laughs> Heights project mm -hmm. or Washington Heights Corner project. I recommend it for every current student. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, um, it happens that uh, Dr. Gao and I and some of our other colleagues are planning a trip to China mm -hmm. next year. Yeah, I'm very excited about Welcome. that. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> We're really looking forward to it. Hope it comes to we be. can meditate. We can meditate. <laughs> yes, in right. one of your facilities. Right. Yeah. yeah, sure. Um, but just thinking about um, perceptions of the field of social work mm. um, in China, I could say a lot about perceptions in America, but I, I just wonder, yeah, could you tell us what, what should we know before we come uh, um, on that trip? Because I was in clinical um, concentration trade. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in China, most uh, the most similar program I can think of mm -hmm. um, is um, like it's in psychology department it's instead mm -hmm. of social work. They are now, there are lots of like, several top universities in China, they are building their um, like professional uh, master programs for uh, clinical therapists. Um, but because in China, the concept of social work is more like low income and maybe not well educated and they, work, they do community work um, for, the governor, for the government, that's our concept. Um, but in several cities, they are more advanced. For example, uh, Guangzhou province, Shanghai, you know, um, in those two places, uh, social work there is actually really professional. Uh, a classmate of mine who also take AGPP, she take AGPP mm -hmm. um, um, here, mm -hmm. and she worked as a clinical social worker for ter terminal like uh, care. Yes. for babe, like children wow. who has cancer. So it can be like really pro professional, but the majority of uh, Chinese society, we don't know what social, what social work is. Okay. Well, that will lead to some interesting conversations. Yes. I think when we're there, I look forward mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Annabelle, Chin, I want to thank you for a really inspiring mm -hmm. and genuine and honest conversation. Mm -hmm. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I hope Folks who have tuned in have enjoyed it as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think, as we all know, the state of our world is troubling. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's so much to be concerned about. And that also means that the need for social workers has never been greater than it is right now. And I think, Annabelle, your, your individual story illustrates just exactly how impactful social workers mm -hmm. can be mm -hmm. uh, and how they can contribute to, to broader society mm -hmm. solutions mm -hmm. uh, in, in the effort towards gaining mm -hmm more social justice mm -hmm. and expanding well-being and mental mm -hmm. health wherever we find ourselves. Mm -hmm. So um, I think your story also is probably inspiring so many mm -hmm. uh, in that the way you took your time you and, and you thought out of the box mm -hmm. uh, an overused term, but you really thought differently about mm -hmm. the impact that you could have. And you you took the time to follow your your passion and your purpose and your potential. Mm -hmm. And I think there's there's magic in that. And there's a lot of, um, there's you. a lesson in that, I think for, for me <laughs> and for, mm -hmm. for others um, here. So thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, I hope everyone who's attended um, this session today enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. Yeah. Um, Before the conversation, I, I just have one sentence that please. I really want to sum up yes. um, for you know the current and prospective students, which is, um, I see, I genuinely suggest you to taking responsibilities for not only yourself, but also others and for the larger society. And if you did that, you will feel that you are fearless and you, the happiness you can, mm -hmm. you can have is also like larger. And yeah, that's the one thing to taking the responsibility. That's really important. And that's for your own sake. That's what I want to see. It was really wise. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah that's there's, there's wisdom in that. So thank you. Um, I hope everybody here finds, takes, takes heart in that mm -hmm. uh, and finds the motivation and courage to find their true purpose, mm -hmm. uh, which lies in every one of us. There's possibility there. And uh, 
I think this is a great demonstration and great inspiration for it. So thank you again, Annabelle. Thanks again to everybody for joining us today. We wish you all the best as you chart your own course and figure out what your possibilities are in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>